Hello everybody, my name is Ignaz Bakeus and I'm a wellness coach, I'm a TV host and today I'm going to be interviewing my friend of mine that I've met him a couple of weeks ago but the feeling is that I know him a lot longer. Jeffrey M. Smith is sitting next to me. Hi Jeffrey. Ignaz. And today I'm going to talk with him about GMO and I remember the day when I first saw the movie about GMO and I was really shocked. I was afraid even go to the grocery store and buy things. Why is that? Because, you know, I saw a lot of, a lot of information and then when the, when the main character at the movie, she was really afraid of even go and buy everything over there. So I had the same feeling and uh, why, why is that? Can you tell me more about well, what is GMO? So GMOs are genetically modified organisms. You take genes from one species like bacteria or viruses and you force it into the DNA of other species like soybeans and corn. And also you can sometimes just change the order or edit the genes within By the accident species. or? No, intentionally. intentionally. But there's a lot of accidents that happen. When you insert a gene, you could actually have hundreds or thousands of mutations up and down the DNA. But do, but do they know them, those no, mutations? No, they, they just they just... They put it on the market for us to eat without checking all of the different things that can go wrong. So, for example, uh, last month or so, they found um, in the genetically modified corn, and this is corn that's engineered not to die when the crop is sprayed with glyphosate herbicide. Mm -hmm. So it's called glyphosate herbicide by Monsanto. It's called Roundup, so it's called Roundup Ready Corn. Yeah. And the 80% the of all GMOs are Roundup Ready, created by Monsanto to be sprayed with their Roundup Ready Corn. Monsanto is? A company. A company. They're a company in the United States. They've just been bought by Bayer from Germany. And uh, they've been voted as uh, every year as the most evil company on earth. Or the most evil the with, most the, with the yeah, horns. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay. So they just looked at their corn and found that there was over a hundred proteins that were randomly different because of the genetic engineering process, because of the what we call the collateral damage, the mistakes that happen, and over 90 metabolites, including two compounds called cadaverine and putrescine. Now, not only are these responsible for the disgusting smell of rotting dead bodies, but they're also linked to allergies and cancer. Mm -hmm. And they, don't, they didn't check for these things before putting this on the market. Another, the, the soybean has a, up to seven times the amount of an existing allergen. Another corn has a new allergen. And so that's one of the things that's a problem is the process of genetic engineering. And then but, there's other things as well. But how did they manage to slip this through? I mean, you, right. have, to, you have to have a signature of somebody that it, it's, it's going to be good for the people. Right, exactly. So, so in the United States, the White House told the Food and Drug Administration, which is responsible for the safety of food, push GMOs on the market quickly. And so the FDA brought in Monsanto's attorney, their lawyer, to be in charge of policy at the agency. And so he was in charge of the GMO policy. And the policy said, we don't see any difference between GMOs and non-GMOs. Therefore, Monsanto can determine if it's safe. It doesn't even have to tell the government. It doesn't even have to label it for the consumers. They can just put it on the market. And then he became, the person in charge became Monsanto's vice president, and then later became the US food czar in charge of food safety under Obama. Now, seven years under Obama. Under Obama. So he went back and forth from 19, late 18, 1980s to 90s, etc. It turns out that seven years later, a lawsuit forced the FDA to turn over 44,000 documents. And then we discovered it was a complete fiction, a fraud, a lie, mm -hmm. that, that they were aware that GMOs were different and that they were dangerous. It was the overwhelming consensus among their own scientists. And they said, we need to test this stuff very carefully. And they were ignored completely. And so it's been put on the market without any required studies in the United States and very few required studies in Europe, certainly not enough to protect us against the potential dangers. So what happened? What, what were the potential dangers to, to the people? 
Well, they describe first of all probably to the people, yeah, and of course, and this secondly is to the environment, right? And they're and they're different but related. Um, so the people at the FDA said it could have new toxins, new allergens, nutritional problems, new diseases. And we see all of those things now. But when did they talk about it? In like the 1990s. 1990, 1990. 1991, 1992. So it's like 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. 20-something. Yeah. 20 and so the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, a medical organization, I've given lectures at their conferences for many years, they decided to analyze GMOs on their own to make a policy statement. And they said the animals that are fed GMOs in the laboratories suffer from digestive problems, they suffer from reproductive problems, they suffer from organ damage, immune system problems, faster aging, and that every doctor should tell their patient, do not eat GMOs. So now we have thousands of doctors from many different uh, types of doctors and other professionals telling their patients, don't eat GMOs. And what they tell us is that when they put their patients on non-GMO food, they get better from a wide variety of diseases. So I've asked people at 150 lectures, what did you get better from? Thousands of people. I surveyed 3,200 people who said they got better mm -hmm. when they switched to non-GMO food. The overwhelming improvement is always digestive disorders. Then increased energy and reduced brain fog. Then reduced weight, reduced anxiety and depression pain, immune system problems, skin problems. So this is mainly what the world is uh, suffering from. Suffering from yeah. yeah. So if you look at the problems that people say they're getting better from, they're the same problems that the animals are suffering in the lab studies. When you take pigs and cows off of GMOs and you put them on non-GMO, they get better from the same problems. And when you look at those problems, in, they increase in the United States, exactly in parallel with the increased use of GMOs and the Roundup glyphosate-based herbicides sprayed on them. And if you look at the what is, can go wrong with GMOs, the glyphosate, the GMOs, and something else, they would predict these type of problems. So if you look at the full complement of evidence, then it is likely, in our opinion, that GMOs and Roundup are contributing to diseases and disorders of millions of people. So how, okay, so they managed to slip it in. Yes, how and it also hurts the environment. Yeah, okay, so about the environment. There was so, a question about the environment. Well, so how, how can you uh, detach it from the environment? How can you recall it? How Re can you, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm afraid you can't. Once it goes into the environment, it cross-pollinates. The seeds <clears throat> move. It becomes part of the gene pool. And so it gets passed on generation after generation. Today we have no technology to clean it up. Now what's interesting is this, that Monsanto's consultant in 1999 uh, at a conference said that they had first met with Monsanto's executives and said, what's your ideal future in 15 to 20 years? And the executive said, a world in which 100% of all commercial seeds are genetically engineered and patented. And the consultant worked backwards from that goal to create the strategy and tactics to achieve it. Now, what's interesting is that goal has not gone away. It's only expanded. It's mm -hmm. not just seeds. It's also insects and livestock and trees and grass and fish and bacteria and algae. So they want to replace nature, to eliminate the products of these billions of years of evolution and replace it with designer organisms designed for greater profit and control. And that is unrecallable, irreversible. So this generation is faced with a responsibility to make a decision, what do we pass on to future generations? A genetically engineered world or nature's world? Now, if you look at genetic engineering, the most common side effect are side effects, mm -hmm. surprises. Yeah. And so you end up with problems like we discussed in the beginning, allergies, etc. Then you also have Roundup that's sprayed on this. That damages the soil, it damages amphibians, it damages insects, it damages humans, mammals. And then you also have corn and cotton that produce their own toxic insecticide. So the bug that eats the corn, the insecticide will poke holes in the guts, 
in the stomach of the insects and kill it. And the industry said, don't worry, it has no effect on humans. They were wrong. It turns out it can poke holes in human cells in laboratory conditions. And then in the environment, these hole, these hole poking toxin can also damage certain insects and damage the ecosystem of marine life. So you have a chemical that's 300 million pounds per year sprayed in the United States, so much it actually is found in 60 to 100 percent of rain samples and air samples in the Midwest United States. It's found in the drinking water, in the surface water, in the groundwater, and so it's everywhere because it's used so much. Jeffrey, <laughs> what can we do? Well, I mean, what can we do to save our lives, to save our future generations and uh, save our environment? Uh, it seems that we will not going to have a place where to live, you know, if it's, if it's going to be changed that much. I know, I know. And it's interesting. I said that in 1999, a consultant revealed that Monsanto's goal. In that same conference, another company predicted in five years, by 2004, it would be 95% replacement of all commercial seeds with GMOs. But they did not anticipate what happened three days later in Scotland. A scientist born in Hungary who was working there, the top scientist in the world in his field, was given a grant by the UK government to figure out the testing <coughs> protocols for GMOs to be used in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so he designed this research and then put potatoes through the test with rats. And within 10 days, the rats had damage to their, to their intestines, to their stomach, to their immune system. The brains were smaller. The liver was partially atrophied. They were a Cancer. mess. Not, it was part potentially precancerous okay. cell growth. Because when I watched the movie, yeah, I yeah. saw that. They, potentially mm, precancerous mm -hmm. is what we say. Because they didn't actually have tumors, but they had something that can lead to tumors. So <clears throat> when he went public with his concerns, <clears throat> He was a hero for two days at his institute. But then the UK Prime Minister's office called the director, and the next day the scientist was fired, he was gagged, he was kicked out, he, they, they did not impl implement his protocols, and for seven months he was unable to speak, and they, they worked to destroy his reputation. So that means it's, the world is on it. I mean, everybody has their connections to not L let somebody talk about exactly. it. Exactly. About what's damaging the whole world, the human body, the environment. But it gets, it gets better, though, because after seven months, because of the UK Parliament invited him to testify, the gag order was lifted, he was able to speak, and over 700 articles about GMOs were written within a single month in the UK alone. Europe was on fire about GMOs. This was in, in um, 1999 or actually in, uh, yeah, 1999, February 16th. And because of that, the food industry realized that people are now concerned about GMOs. And 10 weeks after the gag order was lifted, first Unilever, then Nestle's, then every other food company said, okay, no more GMOs in Europe. Now they still use animal feed. So you're eating milk, meat, and eggs if you eat meat, or animal, or, or whatever, and it, the animal feed is mostly GMOs in Europe. So in Europe, yeah? Yeah. In the United States, we not only eat the animal feed, we directly eat the GMOs. We eat approximately 192 pounds per year per person of the GMOs directly. But you don't have that problem, but you so still how, have... So how do you manage to keep, keep yourself alive? How, uh, how do people... The, the, health, the health statistics in the United States are terrible. Um, we have reduced our... our ranking in the, in the uh, industrialized nations in the last several years, and we think GMOs are part of that. Now, what we've done at our Institute for Responsible Technology... This is this is institute that you created? Yes, yes, in 2003, um, is <clears throat> we have educated people about the health dangers, about the links to cancer, for example, because glyphosate is a class 2A carcinogen from the World Health Organization, about the links to the problems with gut bacteria, that glyphosate is, a, is a, also an antibiotic, so it kills bacteria. We linked, talked about the problems with GMOs, the animal feeding studies that show premature death, that show liver problems, kidney problems, hormonal imbalance, sexual reproductive uh, organ problems. We educate people about that, and they say, oh, we don't want to eat it. So in the United States now, the food companies are responding. 
and they're saying, okay, we're not going to serve it in the U.S. So we're kicking it out of the U.S. now more how, and more and more. More and more. Because so how can you kick it out 100%? How much will it take? Well, it's, it's happening. Is it possible? It's happening, and uh, we see what we call a tipping point. We've achieved the critical number so that all the food companies are doing one and then another, then another. And so we think that's going to happen in the next year or two. But we need a, a, special, a special project just for animal feed. Because in Europe, you kicked out GMOs in 1999, but you still have animal feed. Yeah. So we need a, a, a so some additional uh, strategies. As, as people eat meat, so that means they get it. Yeah. See, the thing is... In Europe, uh, people, when, when they had tested for glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup, in the urine. And throughout Europe, people had it, even if they were living in the cities. Mm -hmm. Now, where did you get the glyphosate? Could be the animal feed fed to the animals. The, an the GMOs are sprayed with mm -hmm. glyphosate. Mm -hmm. um, but also, glyphosate is sprayed on wheat, barley, rye, rice, sweet potatoes, potatoes. A lot of non-GMO food just before harvest to dry it down. So we have to end that. We have to stop the use of glyphosate and pre-harvest. And so it's important for people to choose wisely so that they're getting the healthy, non-GMO, non-Roundup sprayed food for themselves and especially for children because they're most at risk. So how, how do you do that? Will, will you read it somewhere? Does, uh, does it have the, 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 the labels the labels on it? So in Europe, you're lucky because you have mandatory labels. And if something intentionally uses GMOs, it says it's GMO. If something is accidentally contaminated, if it's more than 0.9% in any ingredient, it must be labeled. Mm -hmm. You have very few products that are labeled. Now, it's not enforced well, so we don't know if it's an accurate uh, thing, but in general, there's very little direct ingredients. But you should find out from the companies you buy your meat, milk, and eggs from. Do you use non-GMO feed? Ask them that. And if they do, then that would be your choice. If it's organic, that's a better choice. Because if it's organic, then it's not allowed to be sprayed with Roundup as well. Mm -hmm. What about Lithuania? You visited here, um, and you said you have you have like maybe good news or bad news for Lithuanians. How do they live here? How do they eat? What's your opinion? What do you know about how we how we kind of are you uh, know, progressing I, or regressing in that? In I that didn't question? call all the meat companies. I didn't call all the dairy companies. Yeah. Um, you do have people. I mean, you don't have a lot of GMOs here for the direct ingredients. You do have the animal feed situation, um, but you also have the glyphosate that's sprayed on the grains. And the, and the lentils and other legumes. So it's not a clean situation. It's a dangerous situation, in my opinion. So for those who have allergies, like their kids have allergies, so it might be because of that. Well, you, you can get organic food here, right? Yeah, of course. So here's what I suggest. Take your whole family and go 100% organic for a month, okay? You may pay more, but take notes. Have a journal. Write down what you eat. But write down your energy level, your mood, and all your symptoms every day. Is your, are you <clears throat> sleeping well? Are you no longer depressed? Do you have more energy? Is the digestion better? So there are some people, many people, who are very, very sensitive. And so I have a, a film called Genetic Roulette, which we'll talk about, but I have a new film coming out called Secret Ingredients, which is about families when they switch to organic, Autism can go away in sons or get better. Uh, cancer has gone away. Uh, infertility has gone away where the parents can now have children. Mm -hmm. Skin conditions, uh, uh, chronic pain, uh, depression. All these things have gone away. Asthma, allergies. So it's really important. We may be spending our entire lives eating poisons and not knowing. But we take out one month, switch to organic, and see what happens. It might change something that will improve your life dramatically. You talk about this in this movie of yours, Genetic Roulette. Yeah, in Where Genetic Roulette, that's already out. That's, a, that's basically the, the general problems with genetic engineering and the problems with Roundup, the general ones. Um, there's some testimonials in there. There's three parents of autistic kids that all say that their kids got better 
not, I mean, not completely better, but improved. Um, in the new film, we have uh, two that are no longer autistic. Um, we have the descriptions of what happens in the body when you eat GMOs or what could happen in the body. And what it had, this film has been played more than 300 times on television in the United States. And it came out, it had a huge impact on the eating of millions of people. I just played it in, on TV in Russia. Millions of people. Millions of people, maybe tens of millions. Uh, in fact, the year it came out, uh, the number of Americans that were concerned about the health dangers of GMOs went from 51% to 61%. So increased by over 30 million people. And wow. so we think the film had something to do with that. Okay. So um, this is how we've been eliminating GMOs from the food supply, by reaching millions of people. Couple of last questions. and. Um why do you do it? Why do you do what you do? I mean, why do you create movies? Why do you talk about this issue to the people in the whole world, millions of millions of people? Why? Well, the problem is that the biotech industry has been lying. They put out mythologies that GMOs will feed the world, and the experts say, of course, it won't. They say it'll increase yield, and the experts say, of course, it doesn't. They say it'll reduce the use of herbicides, which went up by over 500 million pounds in the United States in 16 years. They say that it was tested carefully, and of course, it's not. And so with so much money at stake, they are willing to risk our lives and our planet for their profit. So I realized when I heard the story originally 21 years ago, it was from a scientist, a genetic engineer, who said, there's no way this stuff is safe. He was an award-winning scientist. He said, the process is unpredictable. And if you put it in the food supply, you can do damage to everyone who eats. If you put it in the environment, it can spread and be there permanently. And I realized this is threatening the entire planet, all living beings, all future generations. And I realized, because I have a background in communication, we need to communicate the truth. And so I've written two books. I'm working on my fourth movie. That I've been to 45 countries speaking. I've given thousands of lectures and interviews and articles. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. And the thing is, it's working. You know, I didn't think it would take as long, uh, but it is working. And so um, it's kind of like I want to do it finish it and then get on to something else yeah. but it's taken 21 years it's, it's not so gonna I'll, let you. I'll, I'll get on with something else i'll <laughs> get not, on with something else it's not gonna let maybe you i'll be now. like you and i'll do exercises yeah. Yeah, but right now i just have to protect the the health and the environment and all future generations just that much okay but uh, do you feel safe about that because you mentioned money corruption <laughs> stuff like that and i and i know what's going on remember the scientist you told me about yeah, yeah, yeah. he was gone you know he was, he, he was he was fired and stuff like that how do you li live and like be safe? Well, first of all, I made sure that I have no boss, <clears throat> that I am my own boss. When I went to publish my book, a publisher said, we'll take it. I said, no, no, no. I'll publish it, you distribute it. Because Monsanto had threatened another publisher and had got them to stop publication. So okay. I said, they can't threaten me. Okay. So um, they try to discredit with, with uh, scientists, they'll attack them viciously, they'll get them fired, they'll get them to denied tenure. Um, with me, they just try to discredit. So they have many websites dedicated against me. Just you know, to discredit yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, they, and they look at my past, they, they hire pr uh, private detectives, they look at my past, and all they could find is that I meditate and that I dance. <laughs> and they try to use that against me. Would you listen, would you listen to GMOs from someone who, who dances and meditates? So, so I, I don't pay any attention to them because we're winning. You know, I, some people say, oh, you must respond. I said, yeah, if I respond, I might convince the 12 people that believe them. But I'd rather create a film seen by uh, millions, fifth, of fifth, millions of people or write, a, or write an article or go on TV with you and convince people of the truth rather than have to try and defend myself. So, as you know, when you step into a role of, of living your mission, as you do every day, you don't have to be brave because you're fearless. You don't have to think, uh-oh, what am I going to do? You just step into a sense of, this is what I'm here for. And since this is what I'm here for, I just do it. And so, even though they may try and discredit me and whatnot, it doesn't bother me. I just do what I need to do. So the last message to Lithuanian people mm. or wh who, whoever is going to watch it, okay. last message and right. we're going to finish this. So 
We're talking about a, a company that, that promotes lies, that is dealing with the most powerful level of biology, the DNA, that it can replicate and can influence all living beings and all future generations. My last message is this. This is not trivial. This is highest priority. And it's an opportunity. We can choose to fear. I don't. We can choose to be sad. I don't. We could choose to be angry. I don't. I choose to just act, to be empowered. And I invite people, whether they're sad, fearful, or angry, to, trans to digest that in a way that gives them power. Instead of being a victim, be a victor. Instead of feeling like, oh, what are we going to do? Take charge. Be in charge of your own food, what you eat, what you gi give to your children. And share the information boldly. And you may be, some people are attacked, but most people, it's mostly people like me. You share information and, you're, and, you're, and you help others, and this is how we can change the world. In fact, it's already changing the world. We've already achieved the tipping point in the United States. It's being kicked out, so it does work. Thank you. Jeffrey, so it was amazing, and I'm, thank you that you spent some time to talk with me and to share this with the people. They're going to watch it, and uh, I wish you all the best, and I'm, I'm really glad that um, God Almighty uh, he introduced us. Introduced oh, us. Oh, absolutely! And I saw you on stage, and I said, "Oh man, you're lit up." I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna hang with him. And you, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, uh, you heard Jeffrey. You heard a lot about GMO. You can see his movie. There's a lot more uh, distributed here. You can read his books. And my last message to you is: start with yourself right now. There's no time to waste. Thank you, and I'll see you soon. It was Ignaz Bakayus. Safe eating.